Hey guys, what's up? So today I have a very strange topic for you guys. A very weird conversation because this video is for sure going to cause some discussion with you guys and I really want to encourage that because it's a very interesting topic. It's something that most gamers, especially us who love RPGs with a passion, don't usually address or when these types of conversations comes up we usually avoid them. I don't want to do that because I found this topic to be very interesting actually. It has some, a, a lot of points of view, a lot of perspectives and it has generated through the course of years lots of discussions, lots of arguments, sadly, lots of fights and all that stuff so I think it's very very interesting and that is the truth about RPGs you're probably wondering about such enigmatic title why, why this title right what do you what does it mean by the truth about RPGs well I would probably need an entirely really long video to explain what a true RPG is what exactly is a role-playing video game and I don't want to get into that but I need to in order to explain so the, the fastest way that I can explain is what most of you probably already know what is a role-playing video game? that is a game in which you take the role of a character and start a whole journey through not exactly maturity but to a, a journey of growth, of growing up not necessarily as an adult but you know as a human being or whatever, as a character so to say and um, if we use the, the logic term you know the literal term of role any video game can be a role even Contra is a role playing video game in that case because you're playing as a character you are being playing the role as, as a character and well if we literally translate the word role playing video game that could be pretty much every single video game, right? But we all know that a true role-playing video game is that in which you start uh, an adventure or, or uh, some, a drama or something like that and you start growing up and living. So to me, role-playing video games are very similar to real-life simulators even, even if a lot of them pretty much almost every single one of them includes heavy fantasy elements a, a role-playing video game is that in which we all uh, play we feel as if we were part of the story and that's what, I, that's what I wanted to get at with this video that's in my opinion the truth about RPGs that most of them do not follow that statement especially nowadays if we take a look back at the first uh, role-playing video games for computers most of them had something really unique that was the epitome of, of a new genre and that was the power of making decisions and how these decisions affected your story, your adventure with this character, with this role you, you're playing as okay and that's the problem with most RPGs whether they are from Europe America or Japan or where, wherever in this world most role-playing video games don't just follow that they don't you don't take decisions within the video game that affect your story I mean there are of course a lot of good examples even modern RPGs for example uh, the devil survivors Game, Devil Survivor games for, from Shin Megami Tensei those are games in which you often come, come up with decisions and those decisions greatly affect the story the main plot there are also role-playing games in which you get a lot of uh, these same choices, these same decisions but they don't really affect I don't know, take Tales of Celia 2 for example I don't want to spoil anything for you if you haven't played that game but there's a lot of decision making in that game in Tales of Celia 2 and about 80% or more of the decisions you make they don't really affect the story 
no matter what you choose, it is the same, the same outcome. Technically, literally the same outcome. So, what's going on nowadays? What happened with true role-playing video games? And don't take me wrong, you know I'm a big fan. This is my favorite video game genre. I think, in my opinion, is the best video game genre ever because most of the games include pretty much a lot of aspects from other video games, other types of video games. They're really long. You don't just finish these games in, in one hour or one sitting, which is something that you mostly do with most other video games. Uh, some of them, you, it might take you, I don't know, a few days to finish them. But with RPGs, is a lot of time invested in them. But that's just my opinion and I don't want to get into that. The thing is that I love RPGs, you know that, obviously. This channel is oriented to RPGs. So I don't want you to take me wrong. I'm just criticizing something very peculiar because I want to have a discussion with you guys in the comment section below. I really want to know what you think about this, about why most RPGs, in, and I'm not saying new generation RPGs or modern RPGs, no. This is something that, that, that's been happening since the 90s, since, since, since the Super Nintendo era, since the NES era, where you could clearly, clearly see that you weren't making decisions or whenever you were making them, it didn't even matter at the end, you know? It's like this, most RPGs are really linear, story-driven uh, video games in which you... So most of the, in some, in some of them, a choice is presented to you and you gotta choose yes or no, or yeah, let's go, or let's go that other way. But let's be honest, guys, in most RPGs, you make these decisions and it takes you to the same outcome, to the same place, and sometimes they are so cynical that whenever you make a decision, if the decision is wrong or the choice is wrong, another character barges in and says, no, we shouldn't do this. So it's probably best if we do this. It's like somebody else is making the decisions for you. So what's the point of role playing? You're not really role playing in those kinds of games. I don't know, take, um, like I said, Devil Survivor. Another good example, maybe Chrono Cross who has a game that has a lot of endings and there's like 10 decisions in the game well there's a lot of choices in the game but some of them don't really matter what you choose but there are those in, in that game in which if you choose uh, the third option or the first option it takes you to an entirely different plane an entirely different storyline uh, story arc or something like that and that's when I, at least I am feeling like I'm playing, really playing a role-playing video game. But, like I've been saying the entire video, in most games that doesn't happen. Take, I don't know, Final Fantasy, or Fire Emblem, for example, or Wild Arms. Those are games in which there are very few choices, and even if they are, for example, in the Final Fantasy, there's a lot of choices in there, but no matter what you choose is the same outcome or it slightly changes a route but sooner or later do you go back to the main route and what about the silent protagonists you know when I'm when I made the top 10 worst JRPG cliches a lot of people mentioned that the silent protagonist was a cliche it is a cliche but that's something that's been happening since ancient times the silent protagonist is was actually the main idea the core of a role-playing video game so you could feel as if you were the character so that's why I don't think the silent protagonist is exactly a cliche but that's another topic the thing is the problem with the silent protagonists and a lot of people mentioned this in, in that video is that most of the time it's like you're not making any decisions whatsoever some other character is always always most of the time always, always or most of the time making those decisions for you I'm currently finally playing Persona 5 and without as many spoilers as, spoilers as possible all I'm gonna say is that one of the co-stars that spends a lot of time with you is always making these decisions for you you get the, the choice what do you want to do today uh, you get the option of doing this that or this other thing and if you choose the first one the, this other character says ah we probably shouldn't do that today <laughs> you choose the second one is the same situation so I'm left to the to the third choice and I'm like 
why didn't they why, why didn't they just keep this? Why did they offer me in the first place these choices if I can't really choose between them and no matter what I choose, nothing's gonna change. The story is not gonna go on effect, uh, affected by or anything. You know, it's just gonna follow its own route. And that's, well, that's not something that really bothers me. I've gotten used to that since I started playing video games. But during my first years of playing role-playing games, um, I always wondered why are they called RPGs and then I made my research, I investigated and I came up with that, you know, with that question like I, I don't feel like I'm role playing here and this is a problem that, well, let's not say a problem, this is something that's probably at fault as to why many, many, many people think The Legend of Zelda are RPGs because <clears throat> if you take Final Fantasy and The Legend of Zelda, they have a lot of similarities, story not story-wise, but uh, gameplay-wise. And in both games, sometimes you make decisions, but nothing really affects them, like I've been saying the entire video. And so people say, how come The Legend of Zelda is not an RPG, if it plays almost exactly the same as a, any Final Fantasy game? But uh, the, I don't think The Legend of Zelda are RPGs. Uh, I'm going to make a video about that one day, I promise, I really want to actually, but they are right, right? They are right, they are correct when they say, it makes you think, when somebody asks you how come The Legend of Zelda is not an RPG, you start thinking, and when you listen to these people, their arguments, you start thinking, they have a point, there's just no real decision making there. You don't feel like you're role playing. You feel like just just being you're just being driven by the other characters or the story itself towards the end. And no matter what you do, no matter what you choose, is the same ending. Some games have different endings, like Near, for example. But I played Near two times. I beat the game twice, and about 90% of the game, I don't feel like I made any drastical decision or important decision that changed drastically the story towards another route or another thing. It changes to another ending, that's right, but in the end, the entire story was technically the same. And um, so that, my friends, is the truth about RPGs. Sometimes, I mean, you could say that you're not playing role-playing video games, but then what kind of games are we playing, right? In any case, RPGs or not, I freaking love them. Whether I can make decisions or not, or my, whether my decisions affect the story or not, I don't care. I love them either way. Some of my favorite RPGs don't have all that decision-making stuff. They are a linear, story-driven, character-driven, and you're just going walking through, through the entire journey, through the entire adventure, as if somebody was holding your hand. I don't care, I don't mind that, I still love them. So I'm not criticizing the genre whatsoever in any case. But uh, what I want to do with this video is to encourage you to share your thoughts. What do you think about this? What do you think? Um, even if you do not like RPGs, come and share your opinion. It's really important. I really would like to know what you think about this. Let's begin a discussion, a friendly discussion about this topic because it's very interesting in my opinion. And it's just so very enigmatic and it's really open to all sorts of discussion and arguments. So I thought it was a really cool idea, guys. So um, but that's it. So don't forget to share your opinion there, please, so we can you know, make a discussion of this particular topic. Thank you for watching. Don't forget that I always upload videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. And I've been doing that for quite a while now, but I always forget to remind you of that. I always forget to mention that in my videos, but now you know. Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time.